one is for you from Jesus. Jesus loves you, my friend. Jesus loves you. He loves you so much. I received these gloves that I really love. It's my favorite color. <laughs> yes. And I received this awesome mask that I'm going to scare my little sister and brother in the night with. <laughs> yes. And this pants. And I'm going to use them in every book I have for school. And these awesome socks. And yeah, I just love it. It's like, <laughs> it brings this feeling to my heart that there's somebody out there that wants to share God's word and even though we feel lost, that God is not there, that yes, God exists and He hears our prayers. <laughs> Thank you. Hi everyone, we have some exciting news. With just a few clicks, you can pack an Operation Christmas Child shoebox gift online and share God's love with a boy or girl in need around the world. Simply select toys and other fun items you'd like to include from our collection and personalize your gift with your own letter and photo. Samaritan's Purse will then pack the gift for you and send it on its way for a donation of just $25. So this is Pastor Marvin Singh of Villarup United Methodist Church. And I would like to first uh, thank God for all the veterans. We recently, this week, we have celebrated. So thank you for your service. Uh, we'll also pray in the church on Sunday uh, in an in-person service. And we will remember each one of you in our prayers. So thank you for all what you've done. And uh, also we thank God for another opportunity God gives to us uh, to meditate on God's word and we continue to do so on First Thessalonians and today it will be chapter 4 verses 1 to 12. You know it was, for me it was difficult you know where I uh, cut it down or something. Uh, it's so much you know every time you go to the word something new comes up. But anyway let's pray that God will speak to us and through us. Let us pray. Give us this day our spiritual bread to nurture us, to nourish us, to speak to us, to correct us, Lord. So here we are, Lord. Holy Spirit, come, dwell, speak, and use. In Jesus' name, amen. So let me uh, uh, read the scripture for you. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 1 to 12. Finally, brothers. Finally, brothers is, uh, means concluding one section of his thoughts because he'll continue to write uh, another, le uh, another chapter. But, you know, he said, finally, we instructed you how to live in order to please God. As in fact, you are living. Now we ask you and urge you in the Lord Jesus to do this more and more. For you know what instruction we gave you by the authority of Lord Jesus. It is God's will that you should be sanctified, that you should avoid sexual immorality, that each of you should learn to control his own body in a way that is holy and honorable. Not in passionate lust, like the heathen, who do not know God. And that is in this matter, no one should wrong his brother or take advantage of him. The Lord will punish man for all such sins, as we have already told you and warned you. For God did not call us to be impure, but to live a holy life. Therefore, he who rejects this instruction, instruction does not reject man, but God who gives you his Holy Spirit. Now about brotherly love, we do not need to write to you. For you yourself have been taught by God to love each other. 
And in fact, you do love all the brothers throughout Macedonia. Yet we urge you, brothers, to do so more and more. Make it your ambition to lead a quiet life, to mind your own business, and to work with your hands, just as we told you, so that your daily life may win respect with, <coughs> with uh, sorry, respect of outsiders, so that you will not be dependent on anybody. So let me repeat this words, uh, so that all your daily life may win the respect of outsiders, and so that you will not be dependent on anybody. So this is the instruction Paul is writing to Thessalonians. We continue to do the studies. And the title I've, I've put it here, Living to Please God. Okay? So here Paul is writing, how do, you, how do you please God? And especially when you are living, not dead, living. And living sacrifices he talks about. And uh, how to know the will of God he talks about. And then what is my obligation when I say, you are my Lord, you are my Savior, you reign in me. Last time you talked about, Lord reign in me. Uh, but if it's my Lord, how can I defy his word, his conduct, his instruction? So that's what Paul is writing. So he said, believers are under obligation to please God. Okay. Why? Why we should please God? Because what is the obligation here? Which means that our one lives in accordance with the will of God. Okay? And uh, Paul is giving a guideline to the believers. That was the first, chapter, first uh, verse which we read. Second is, we are under authority of Lordship of Jesus Christ. It is our obligation to honor Christ in and through our daily living. It is not Sunday to Sunday that oh, once uh, that we are dedicated or oh, that we will spend time with the Lord we will worship the Lord. You're talking, no, no, it's every day. Your words, thoughts, and deeds should be worshipful. You know, your whole body should be worshipful. That's what he's talking about, daily living. Because people are watching. They don't say, okay, why do you go on Sunday? And then what happens to Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday? How can you be different than when you go on Sunday to worship a holy, 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 and then you do the unholy act? So that's what Paul is talking said. We are under the authority of the Lordship, and therefore we need to honor. The rules of conduct are given by authority of Jesus Christ, and they are given so that we can become Christ-like. More of His word in my life, more I'll please God, I will be Christ-like. That's what Paul says, you know, let the mind of Christ be in you. Let the attitude of Christ be in you. And when the attitude and mind of Christ will be us, we'll be like Christ. And people will see in us, who lives in you? Oh, Christ is living in you. Why you are doing this thing? Oh, the Christ is living in you. Why you are compassionate and merciful? How your language is different? Because Christ is living in you. So that's what he's talking about. Then in verse 3 to 8, he talks of the morality. He's talking about the sexual immorality, which uh, was prevailing in Ro Roman Greco world. And he talks about, number one, the relationship with opposite sex. We need to be to live a sanctified life and avoid sexual immorality. One of the things, you know, many of God's servants and many of Christians, you know, Satan attacks to break the family relationship, to break the uh, relationship with, uh, with husband and wife, and uh, he brings other people into their life. His, our sight goes to someone else. You know, as a pastor, how many times I was tempted, whenever I went alone, I was tempted, I'd come and Nalini, and tell Nalini, he said, I am not going to alone. I am not, I will not be going to a, a, any house alone because first thing, you know, we are tempted because we think nobody watches us. But God's Spirit, which is in us, uh, which compels us, you know, what you are doing. So always, you know, and that's why Jesus said two by two. And we always went, I went always with Nalini, if Nalini is not going, my son was going, if my son was not going, one of the youth members were going, if a youth member was not going, I took some elder of the church. So uh, to avoid that uh, temptation, because we all are men, subject to all passions like anyone else. And therefore, 
when we are weak, Satan will strike, you know. When we think nobody is watching, he will strike us. So that's what Paul is talking about. He said, the relationship with opposite sex, we need to live a sanctified and avoid sexual immorality. Paul writes to them that, you know, why you should avoid? Because you know, holy God. And who has called you to be holy as I am holy? And your relationship, keep in mind that you are related to the holy God. You are dwelling in the presence of God. You cannot uh, do things, the others who do not know God. We know God. Okay? So when we know God, He is holy. So keep in mind and in your heart and in your eyes, in your ears, remember God is a holy God. Who has called you. So that's what Paul is said, uh, right to in the holy God who has called you. And then he said, lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh and the pride of life are temptation to defy the will of God and to displease the holy God. Okay. And when we give in, therefore we, when we defy God's holiness and holy calling, we defy God. And do you think God will be holy? God, God will be happy. God, we will be pleasing God. No, not at all. Then that's why I say First John chapter two, verse sixteen and seventeen, which says, "For everything in the world, the craving of sinful men, the lust of his eyes, and the boasting of what he possesses, or what he has or does, comes not from the Father, but from the world." Now, two words which come to our mind, W-O-R-L-D. One comes from the Word of God, which gives us clear instruction to please God, but then put L also in that, W-O-R-L. The, the L of Lucifer, uh, uh, the lies of Lucifer, we put into the world, with the world come. Why world? Because the world keeps changing their standards. Today what you have a standard, tomorrow it won't be the same. And therefore he said, what things come from the world, you are in the world, but not of the world. Okay? And therefore it's warning to us, he said, we need to remember that Satan is a liar and he de uh, deceived many people by his lie. So stick to the word of God, not to the world of God, or wo world of uh, Satan, you know. So keep that in mind. Word of God versus world, which is deceived, which Satan had put his uh, impact in that. Second thing is, so first in relationship with the opposite, he talks about. Second, to please God. How do you know? How do you please God? One must do the will of the Lord. His will is the sanctification of all believers. That's what Paul is writing here. Paul also writes to the Romans believers in famous word many of you have memorize this one and uh, preach on this one, but I would like to put it again to you, that Romans chapter 12, 1 and 2. Therefore, I urge you, I plead you, I request you, okay? I beg you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, remember what God has done for you. He has been merciful. He forgave your sin. He died for me and for you. He crucified himself. He, he denied himself and crucified himself for us. And then he is asking us, so urge you brothers in view of God's mercy to offer your bodies as a living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the patterns of the world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing and perfect will. So how do I know and how do I please God? How do I know the will of God? When I will not be conformed to the world, the standards and the patterns of the world, but I stand on the word of God, the standard that God has called us. Be holy as I am holy. God has separated us and set apart. The sanctification is He set apart by His blood. And how can I defy what God has done for me? So He's talking. The Greek noun pornia uh, means illicit sexual relationship of any kind 
originally meant primarily with harlots, but sexual union within marriage is sanctified by the gospel. Outside of that is forbidden. So gospel took a firm stand in opposition to the mores of Greco-Roman society, which was permissive and have a different standard. Evangelical commentary of the Bible, which is written, compiled by Elwell, page 1078. Okay. Third, he talks about the marriage. He continues to dwell on the marriage relationship. Each of you should learn to control his own body in a way that is holy and honorable, not in passionate lust like the heathen who do not know God. So this is why we keep that holy relationship in marriage, because we know God, whom God has joined together. Let no one put them asunder. No one. Okay, so whom God has joined together. And therefore, this, that's the word of God. That's the instruction of God. It's not my word. And what God has made that marriage, is, that's why it's a whom God has joined together. People who are called Christian, people who have uh, received the Lord, they need to remind themselves, this is the word of God, not mine. To whom God hath joined together. Have no one right. You know, many other rights also God is saying. You cannot add and subtract to the word of God. You cannot add. So this is also the word of God. No one can add and subtract. Oh, uh, we were, I was uh, uh, watching T.D. Jake's sermon yesterday. And he was talking about uh, the uh, John chapter 15 and verses 1 to 10. And he was talking the maturity of a Christian believer. He said, uh, when we are related with Christ, okay, when you abide in Christ, you will be empowered, you will be strengthened to be stable. That he said, my relationship with Christ makes me stable, not unstable relationship. He said, why in five years, uh, young marriage, we have uh, two divorces and three divorces because, you know, we are, for little things we break it. In. We are not willing to adjust, we are not willing to forgive, we are not willing to remember that God is in control and I need God's assistance and God's grace. So he said, the stability is when you abide in Christ. Remember that he is holy God and I'm in union with holy God and therefore my relationship make me stable to live together. The Greek word, uh, it talks about, it said, uh, word uh, is vessel is skewers, refer to the body. Second Corinthians 4, 7 says, but we have this treasure in earthly, earthen vessel, that the excellency of power may be of God and not of us. Okay. Uh, we get some urge, then we, we flow into it. Remember, who is living in you? Consult him. You invited him. No? The Lord was knocking and you invited him into. So consult him. He is right within you. And the one who is in you is greater than the one who is out in the world. So do you consider the person who is outside or the person who is inside you? Don't neglect the person who is in you. And the one who is in you is a greater. You and me invited Christ. And if you have not invited, so invite now. Because when he comes into your life, things change, things transform. You cannot be the same. It will be a different person. That you remember, God is holy living in me. Then he says, our bodies are described as the jars of clay in the New International Version. In other words, what we are saying is, he said, don't you know that you are the temple of the living God? The Holy Spirit and Holy God is dwelling and living in me. Then don't take unfair the fourth one he talks about to the neighbors or to the family or to a believer. Don't take unfair advantage of church members, especially in the legal matters. First Corinthians chapter 6, 11 to 18. So you read that the whole scripture is given, so I will not uh, speak here. Set an ethical boundary. Do not defraud your brother. In fact, the Ten Commandments also set the boundary that one should not lust or covet anything which belonging to his neighbor. Neighbor's wife, neighbor, anything. You cannot do that. Adultery is the violation of marriage relationship. Paul then gives three reasons why the Christian should live differently than the people of the world. Three things. Number one, he said, the Lord will punish them, he said, right in this word. Vengeance belongs to God. 
Lord will punish if you act and defy him. He'll not leave. Remember the people of Israel when they came out, they were given freedom from slavery and they defied God. And God brought them, taking them to Canaan. And in 40 years, the one generation was finished. And all those who were born into the journey have gone to the promised land, except to Joshua and Caleb, right? So all these people, because they defied God, and God punished them. And you read the history of Israel, how God punished them, because He's the Lord, okay? So vengeance belongs to us. So number one, why we should please Him? Because He will punish us. Number two, we are called to be holy. First Corinthians chapter 1 verse 2. We are called to be holy. That's the call God has given to us. And third, a living a holy life is possible because of the fact that at our conversion, God's Holy Spirit is given to us. We have become the temple of the living Lord. So rejecting Paul's instruction, Paul as a messenger of the Lord Jesus is not rejection of man but of God. So what I'm giving to you is not from you. God has given me the instruction for you. Then verse 9 to 12, he talks about how the Christian should love. You know, there are three things. He talks about uh, how to love. And first thing, love each other. Romans chapter 12 verse 10. The Greek word Philadelphia is described as brotherly love. We are brothers as we belong to the same father who has taught us, John 6, 45 said, he has taught us, you know, he taught us to love each other. First, let me read a few scriptures, both Old Testament and New Testament. John 6, 45. It is written in the prophets, and then we'll quote the prophets. They will all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to the father and learns from him comes to me. Isaiah 54, 13, all your sons will be taught by the Lord and great will be your children's peace. You learn from the Lord. He taught you. And then Leviticus 19, 18, do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against one of your people, but love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. Do not seek a revenge or bear a grudge. How can we, that's why when we come to the Lord's table, Jesus said, first settle any grudge, any unforgiveness, and then come to the Lord's table, and then it will be acceptable. Love one another, as I command John 13, 34, 31. A new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another by this. All men will know that you are my disciple if you love one another. And then Galatians 5, 22, 23, the fruit of the Spirit finally is love. There are so many, but it's love. The second instruction, so one love each other, the second is, is not only to love each other, but all the brothers and sisters in Macedonia. It's not only to your own local community, local church, but beyond that. You love everyone who, who loves the Lord. So that's the second commandment. Make it to ambition, to live a quiet life, and mind your own business and to work with your own hands. So Paul is describing, he said, to be quiet here is a warning against fanaticism and against Advent fever. If the Lord is coming, so do this, do this thing, and the temptation of being busy body, oh, we are busy. That what is warned, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 11. Working with your own hands is encouraged, as Paul and other missionaries worked with their own hands. For good. The pagan world considered the work of the hand to belong to the slaves only. So your daily life may win respect of outsider that you will not be dependent on anybody. Okay? Don't be idle, idle. Uh, but work. Okay? Third is, finally, he said, Peter mentioned that we are partakers of the divine nature. And let me conclude by reading this one. Second Peter chapter 1, 5 to 8. For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith. Okay. So you believe in God very good, but now add something more about it. Eh? Add to your faith goodness, and to goodness knowledge, and to knowledge self-control, and to self-control perseverance, and to perseverance godliness, 
and to godliness brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness love so how is talking about ultimately coming to the love but this from faith to love there is a process faith to love there is a there is a steps which he is talking about Let's go through one after another increase in that from faith to love okay last time we talk faith in action we talk about no how do you express your faith through love and this is what he is talking and finally he said for if you possess these qualities in increasing measure they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our lord jesus christ okay so this is what the word of god says this is an instruction to us how, how do i please god know his will how do i know will live with him listen to the word not the world listen to the word god's word and god is from everlasting to everlasting same yesterday today and forever people change uh some of your friends some of our friends you know when they need us they'll be very friendly after that they will just pass by and they'll not even talk about that people change the attitude change you know and uh, the world pattern changes standard changes uh, fashion design changes but god doesn't change his word doesn't change so stick to the word remember god is in you the holy spirit is in you he has called you to be holy and he will help you let us pray dear lord thank you for your word help us oh god to listen to the instruction though it is given by paul but ultimately from the lord help us oh god to please you to know your will and to love in jesus name amen Hi, I'm Julie Strasberg and we're singing four verses of My Faith Looks Up to Thee.